Welcome to Pin the Q Productions. If you are interested in the culture of the fire service and keeping tradition alive, you have come to the right place. Now sit back and relax with your brothers and sisters and enjoy the show. Be sure to like and subscribe on all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. For more information on Pin the Q Productions, visit www.pintheq.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pin the Q Productions. We are in Jersey City, New Jersey, for this really cool episode about the Gong Club. Now, like many of you watching right now, I'm sure you don't know much about this uh, pretty cool institution, which I've been doing this a while, I didn't know about it. And once I found out about it, it was, it was, it was, we're going. That's it. We're going to go check this out right away. So here we are, and I am with your name? Paul. Paul Schetzel. Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So the first thing I noticed that when we got here was this is a pretty uh, avid area, a very congested area, a lot going on. Yes, it is. It's become uh, the hot spot of Jersey City. This is uh, just off the Newark Avenue Pedestrian Plaza, which has now become uh, closed to street traffic. And uh, Friday and Saturday nights, it's uh, the place to be. I see that, and there's a lot of pedestrian traffic, uh, which we'll show you uh, in a moment. But what's really cool about this building is the history behind the building, because when we were talking off camera, you gave us a rundown of what goes on here and how long this building's been here. So when was this building built? The building dates back to the 1860s, and it was the original fire headquarters for the Jersey City Fire Department. The fire department uh, is coming up on its 150th anniversary. It was formed in June 6, 1871. This 1871. Building, this building is actually a little older than wow. that, <laughs> but this building served as fire headquarters for the uh, Jersey City Fire Department until 1933. And what's important to understand about this particular building and the Gong Club is this is 100% volunteer. Yes, the Gong Club is a nonprofit volunteer organization made up of fire buffs, people who are interested in the history and science of firefighting. And it's one of approximately 70 clubs in the United States and Canada that belong to the International Fire Buff Associates. And clubs like ours are all over the country, uh, many of them running out of old firehouses like this. And they supply uh, quite often the canteen service for the departments in their area. Other clubs run museums uh, or are interested in photography or communications. But the bulk of the, uh, the groups that are belong to the international are just like ours here that focus primarily on taking care of the firefighters and fire victims at a fire. That, that's incredible that you can get you know, a group of individuals to volunteer their time here and to, to come out and you know, one of the one of the roles you guys have is on a fire, second alarm or greater. Correct. So uh, the second alarm or greater, the, the truck you see over my left shoulder will, will arrive, and you guys, um, guys and gals will, you know, help out with coffee, food, um, and I'm sure the firefighters are happy to see this truck coming, especially when it's cold outside. Many of them call it the most indispensable piece of apparatus on the roster. I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> and the rehab operations and. Uh, have taken on uh, a much greater important role in fire uh, fighting and fire service in the past several years obviously with the uh, advent of the bunker gear and doing away with the old uh, style turnout gear the uh, gear that the firefighters wear now is great for protecting them from heat and from burns but you get hot quickly but you get very hot very quickly and uh, as you know from being in new jersey we get our share of 90 degree plus and humidity. So our, uh, our big role, especially in the summertime, is as soon as we get to the scene, we'll bring a cooler or a bottle of water up to the command post so guys can grab and go. We'll set up uh, misting fans, uh, buckets of cold towels, and have Gatorade and uh, more bottled water dispensed from the vehicle. So what's the goal of the organization? You know, uh, you know we talk about this building being invaluable service, which I absolutely agree with. What, what's the goal of this, of this whole organization for you, personally? The goal of the Gong Club and the members that belong to it are to do anything we can to help the firefighters here uh, do their mission to the best of their ability. And that primarily is involves with the canteen operations and the rehab operations that we talked about. In addition to the day-to-day -day operations of running the canteen service and the rehab service for the departments. 
not only in Jersey City, we also cover most of Hudson County as well. Uh, <clears throat> fire buffs by their nature are very interested in the history and science of firefighting, as I said. Uh, many of the members here are, were active or retired firefighters or have some connection to the fire service. Uh, many of them are photographers. You'll look around the walls here and see there's you know, literally hundreds of pictures of yeah, incredible photographs. Firefighters, uh, fires in Jersey City that are uh, historic or otherwise notable. We also are involved with uh, the Jersey City Fire Museum, which is uh, a separate organization, but we have a lot of our members that uh, scout out and collect uh, memorabilia and try and preserve the history of firefighting. Well, it was really good talking to you and learn a little bit about this particular building and the history of this building. Uh, we're going to chat some more about you particularly and then some more of the organization itself. Thank you. We'll be back soon. Hey everyone, back at the Gong Club, and this time we're going to speak to the Chief of Operations here at the Gong Club. You got a big responsibility, right? Yeah. <laughs> so before we go any further, tell everyone who you are. My name is Connie Spellman. I've been a member since 1990. I was the first female member of the club. We have three now. And uh, I've been coming here since 1986. Wow, since 86 you've been in this building. Yes. So Chief, tell me a little bit about the operations of the Gong Club. Like, what's your role? Um, well when we take the canteen out. Right. Um, we're basically a support unit for the fire department, which means that if there's a second alarm fire or bigger or a third alarm in the other towns of Hudson County, we provide water, we provide coffee, hot chocolate, uh, Gatorade. Uh, we can provide food. Normally, it's if it's a small fire, it's like cookies and yeah, stuff. Snacks. If it's a bigger fire, we can do, we have a stove on board. We can do hot dogs or soup or beefaroni. We can do, if it's going to be a major fire, we can get, pizzas from Helen's or we can get McDonald's burgers or whatever to keep the firemen. We carry, in the summer, we carry a misting fan or we have several now. We carry misting fans to cool them down. We carry um, cool towels. We uh, carry the um, the new thing nowadays is uh, rescue wipes right. because yes. of the carcinogens in the fire. Yeah. So we carry we carry them. We encourage them to be used. And uh, in the wintertime, we have glove warmers for that. We have... Um, like I said, the coffee, and uh, we can do, and we can do pretty much anything. It, so, it sounds like food wise, but we yeah. we our job is to support the firefighters, keep them not getting dehydrated, right. and and all that. It's it's incredible that uh, you can get a group of volunteers to come in and take care of this role. How many volunteers would you say you have on the roles? Um, on the on we have thirty three. Okay, all together. Um, there we actually have a couple that live out of state. So they're active when they're here. We have a, right. two that live in Connecticut. We have one that lives in Buffalo. But when they're here, they're very, they're, they're active. So how does it work? Do you have shifts? Do you have like a platoon you said? No, up? it's we get paged out on our phones. Okay. And then whoever, uh, some of us come to right here to get the truck. Okay. And then others respond directly to the fire scene and help out there. So how does how do you get funded? I mean, how do you pay for the coffee and all the food? And um, we get we get do donations okay. um, from the fire departments that we serve in Jersey City. We have payroll deduction. Okay. Every firefighter gives I think it's three dollars now per paycheck, and then um, we also right now in the this time of year we have a fundraiser where we sell calendars. 
Okay, um, we had a member that started it on his own a few years ago, and when he passed away, um, we took it over. Now, how could someone watching right now get one of those calendars to purchase? Uh, they can uh, call the club here, uh, uh, 201-547-5094, or uh, our Gone Club email address is goneclub at comcast.net. All right, great. So right here, click on this link, and that will get you the email so you can purchase a calendar, which would really help out. Yeah, but and, that's and, and that's what we anything that we need for the truck or whatever. That's that's how we supply it. Now, as the chief of the department, how do you keep morale up and how do you keep people coming? Well, basically, um, the guys that are here, they're into it. They're so there's not really, right. you know, we don't really have to encourage people to. I mean, it would be nice to have more, right. but I mean, the guys that come here, they they're into it. So I mean, we don't really have a problem. So one With of the that. things you said is you don't necessarily have to be in Jersey City to be part of this organization. Right. So how could someone join the organization? Same way with the calendars? Well, we have a process where um, you come here, you hang out, get people to learn to know you, and then um, a member has to request an application for you. Very good, yeah. You so fill out the application. Uh, our membership committee takes it. They, there's uh, reference letters that go out, and then... Um, uh, we do an interview and then the members vote on you know the application so it has to be by reference which I think is yeah. great right? yeah. that's good so everybody knows each other and they all go yeah that person's good right to be part of something this this uh, family uh, family included. exactly it's a exactly. very uh, small group so you want to make sure that those people are a good fit right what does this mean to you chief personally like for you personally what does it mean um, I think that I feel like this is an important unit, and as Paul said, the rehabs have been uh, getting more and more important throughout the whole country, not just here, and I think that uh, the firefighters appreciate us, and when we get to the fire scene, even when we're not at a fire scene, and we're somewhere else where the firefighters are at, and they express their appreciation, um, it makes you feel good that you're able to do that. Absolutely. Well, Chief, I certainly appreciate us having you in your home and showing us this building uh, and the amazing amount of history that we've seen since we've been here. Uh, it's incredible just for us to walk around. I know John and, and Chris also. We get lost for a moment in time because you look around and you look at some of these photographs uh, that, that you have here, and it really is like taking a step back in history. It's incredible. Oh, yeah. When we have the door open, when the weather's nice, we get passers by all the time with think we're like a museum but they come in and they're amazed by the pictures right. and everything that we have. I, this really could be confused for a museum because of the amount of artifact you have here and uh, what I also love about this building and what I've seen is your testament to people who've passed on. Uh, it's great you keep their honor here and, and it's plastered with walls of people that have passed on. Yeah. That's incredible. Well Chief thank you very much for having You're us here. And Thanks we're going to show coming. you some more stuff real soon. Stay with us. Hey everyone, we are back at the Gong Club, and this side we're in the kitchen table, which everyone who knows the show knows it well and knows that the kitchen table means a lot to us. It's uh, it's where we break bread, it's where we break balls, and it's where we um, 
foment those relationships that we that we have with each other. Every problem in the world is solved at the firehouse kitchen table. That is true. We say that often, and uh, it couldn't be more true. Or at least we think we're solving problems. Right. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the people out there, but uh, before we go any further, I just want to point out that um, this this calendar is more than just a calendar. Uh, it's not just a, a way to donate to your organization. It's not just a piece of paper with some photographs in it. Uh, Ira Rubin had a big big role in this calendar, correct? Yes. So talk he, to me a little bit about that. He was the historian of the fire department besides being a member of the Gong Club. He would have had the same. He and I joined the same day. Uh, we went to uh, St. Peter's Prep together and uh, we came here together and we joined them the same day in 1972. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2016. But at the time of his passing, he was a uh, fire dispatcher for Jersey City and was also the official fire department historian. So he developed the concept of doing a historical calendar, which he started approximately 10 years ago. Wow. And since his passing, the Gong Club has taken uh, on responsibility for producing the calendar each year. And they're very uh, popular items, as you might imagine, throughout the, uh, the department. And we also get quite a few mail orders from around the country for people who are interested in uh, seeing historic photos and a work chart for the fire department. And Ira was, uh, he was the, really the go-to guy uh, for the Jersey City Fire Department as far as history and you know, the love of this job and the love of this building and the love of this fire department itself. I mean, when I think of Ira, anytime I mention his name to anyone, they all light up because he was bigger than life. Yes, he, uh, his reputation was uh, International, literally, I, I am an insurance adjuster by trade. I was doing a uh, investigation and explosion in a uh, factory in Mexico, uh, uh, Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, a couple of years ago. And there was a group of investigators and attorneys and whatnot sitting around a table. And as we were going around a table at lunchtime, you know, where are you from? What are you doing? That? So I mentioned I'm from Jersey City. The fire investigator on the end of the table said, you know Ivor Rubin? <laughs> so here I am in Juarez, Mexico. And That's there's a guy asking about Ivor Rubin. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, you, you know, that doesn't just happen overnight. That's that's a, a lifetime of uh, reputation and, and, and love. Uh, obviously, he's gone all the way to Mexico. <laughs> right. But he you know? had a, uh, an encyclopedic knowledge of the history of the Jersey City Fire Department. And it's a shame that he passed uh, before... A lot of it could be officially or formally uh, categorized. There was an original charter member of the Gong Club who was very much in, involved in history and, and planned to write a book, but that never materialized either. A fellow by the name of Warren Zapp, he was one of the six original charter members of the Gong Club. But unfortunately, he passed away before uh, the book came to fruition. So there's a lot of material out there that uh, is still available, but there's a lot of uh, material and stories and whatnot that unfortunately went to the grave with those two gentlemen. That's a shame. Well, what what I was telling the chief earlier in the earlier interview was that walking around here and looking at these photographs, it's incredible uh, the amount of history that you've captured and were able to maintain and keep in this building for these firefighters. I mean, do you have uh, firefighters that stop by just to look at these photographs and look at the, the history of this fire department itself? Yes. Uh, Quite often we'll have uh, people come by, uh, younger firefighters that on an inspection or uh, in the area, they'll come in and just wander around and look at all the pictures and whatnot. Uh, just Friday, we did a presentation to the uh, current class of probationary firefighters. There's 37 firefighters in the Jersey City Training Academy now. And after our presentation, one of the young guys came up and said, uh, when somebody on Bay Street, I want to come and see this. I really want to see the, the history of the, the department and uh, the photos that you have. So that that's a great recruit right there because that's someone who gets it. Yes, that's someone who gets it. No, those type of recruits are, are what we're trying to push, and the very reason for the show is because there's a lot more to what we do instead of fighting fire. I mean, there's a lot of history and tradition built around firefighting, and and Jersey City certainly understands that. Yes, and. The neighborhood we're in, when you mentioned that earlier, uh, we've been here since 1958. 
And with the change in the neighborhood over the past decade or so, uh, there's a tremendous amount of foot traffic. And any given Saturday or Sunday in warm weather, we'll have 50 to 100 people stop by with their, their children. We give out helmets and fire prevention literature, coloring books. They all want to sit in the rig and take their pictures. And it's a great public relations tool here being. Oh, here. absolutely. And this is second to none. I mean, as, as far as the fire department is concerned in Jersey City, having this building with this history in it and uh, the amount of passion that you folks have for the fire department and doing what you do as a support system is, you can't put a price tag on that. It's incredible. Thank you. Tell me about your history because I know that your father was a firefighter here in Jersey City at a 17 engine, correct? That's correct, yes. Tell me a little bit about what it was like for you as a child watching your, fire, your father as a firefighter. Well, in... 1947, when he was appointed, uh, he was part of the largest class ever appointed in the history of the department. 173 firemen were appointed that day, as they called them back in the 1940s. They were firemen, not firefighters then, uh, because they had not put any uh, firefighters on during World War II. So it was a huge influx of uh, manpower to bolster the ranks. Typically, firefighters were assigned to the firehouse in their neighborhood. So I happen to live, or we, my family lived in the same square block as the firehouse. So I would be in the firehouse since probably before I can remember. Right. And I would stop by almost every day. I knew everybody that worked there. Uh, got to learn the, uh, the alarm boxes and the box numbers. And back then, there was a, uh, a telegraphic code that you had to uh, send when you returned to quarters. I knew how to do all, all those things back in the old days before there were uh, computers and we actually still used the bells back then. Right. Um, sort of interesting sidelight, uh, 2010, uh, 2008, the floor cracked in a firehouse and they now are in a uh, one-story nondescript warehouse building that's converted to a firehouse. The city put that building up for auction and that's where I live now. I bought that building. You bought that building? Yes. Wow, it's incredible. Wow, that, see you talk about history, the fire service, that, that's actually incredible. So you're going to be able to see every day that part of the history from your father. Yes. That's, that's really incredible, man. That's awesome. Gave me chills. That's really good. So you've had, honestly, a, a first-hand look at the change in the fire service throughout all these years. I mean, you literally have a front window view of the change in the Jersey Fire Department. Speak to me a little bit about that change just for you personally seeing it over these years. Well, I would say the biggest uh, changes, obviously, are uh, safety improvements. Uh, I can remember as a child growing up, the uh, companies in my neighborhood that had a 1954 water pumper, the uh, 1957 Seagrave tractor trailer aerial. The officer, obviously, and the chauffeur would be up front, and the two or three guys the rest of the crew would be on the back step, be out in the elements. Same way with the ladder truck. One guy would ride on the side, one guy would tiller. And now everybody's enclosed in a cab, mm -hmm. heated, air conditioned, seat belted. And there's been you know, incidents back in the 50s and 60s where they would skid on an ice patch and guys would get thrown off the back step. The bunker gear is a big improvement. Uh, in the old days, you would have rubber coat and three-quarter length boots, uh, leather helmet, fortunately leather helmets are still in vogue and uh, we have other materials for helmets but they still work uh, as the leather helmets do. But we have the fully encapsulated bunker gear now so that uh, the burn injuries have been quite uh, significantly reduced because of that. We talked about that earlier, consequently that drives even a more important need for the services rehab, that right. we do for right. rehab. And Paulie, what's this mean to you? I mean, you know, we're talking about this history. You, you bought your old, your father's firehouse. Uh, obviously, this means a great deal to you. What does it mean to you personally to be involved in this? It's just part of the fabric of uh, my life. I think it's you know, important that uh, groups like this support the, uh, the firefighters and their mission in keeping the rest of the city safe. And for me, it's very fulfilling to be able to play a small part in that. But I think it's a little bit more than a small part. 
you know, it's a much larger part, in my opinion. I mean, just just from what I've seen and, and had the opportunity to learn in the time we've been here, uh, it, it's, it's it's actually remarkable, in my opinion. And, and I think that uh, what you're doing here is important. And I also think that what you're doing here also builds a great deal of morale for the city and a great deal of morale for the fire department themselves because, you know, we had mentioned earlier that most of the firefighters say that when that truck pulls up, it changes everything. You know, I'm looking at photographs of these firefighters back in the, the 60s uh, in, in 70s standing next to a very similar truck. I mean, there's a truck right here that um, it's cool that you captured these history right here on the kitchen table, the progression of this unit. What's it take to keep this running? What's it take financially to keep this moving? Is it enough just in donations from the members or? Well, we primarily get our funding from a voluntary payroll deduction plan in the Jersey City Fire Department. We have 100% participation. Wow, that's incredible. And the other cities in the county, uh, Kearney has implemented a payroll deduction plan within their uh, uh, firematic organization, the uh, FMBA. The other uh, towns in the county, including the North Hudson Regional Department, the, their IAFF local, uh, will support us by giving uh, donations either on an annual or quarterly basis. So that helps us uh, keep afloat. We own the vehicle, we maintain it, we supply the fuel, we supply all the supplies, we maintain the quarters here, uh, we have a supply room, obviously. Uh, computer, we also uh, you know, keep, try and keep a lot of our records by computer and uh, our radio system as well. The uh, goal of the club is to be financially sufficient, uh, uh, self-sufficient, where we do not have to go into uh, an emergency mode, so to speak, when it's time to replace the, uh, the apparatus. Right. And we've been able to do that through the payroll deduction plan and the contributions that we've gotten from the Yes. So the union, uh, the union has a big role in supporting what's what's happening at the Gong Club. Well, the union and in the city firefighters right. and, and the city. The city is gracious enough to have us here in this building. And as I said, we have a hundred percent participation in the uh, payroll deduction plan. So that enables us to put money aside each year to eventually replace the. Uh, the canteen. The current rig is going to be 19 years old in another month. We hope wow. to get, uh, we hope to replace it before it needs antique plates. <laughs> 25. We throw the QQ plates on it. But we, you know, we do very well in keeping it maintained. It uh, doesn't have a lot of miles on it, but it has a lot of hours on it because we'll go to a fire and we could be running uh, all the equipment and the engine and the generator on there for. Yeah, those are idle hours. Four, five, six, seven, sometimes ten hours. Right. Chief, what's the goal for you looking at the organization? What would you say the goal is for you long term? To keep us going, to keep supporting the fire department, to, uh, as I mentioned off camera, we do quite a few details throughout the year. There, uh, we have uh, the Carlos Snake Run Run, we have um, the Mark Lee Toy Drive that we, we support and we, we uh, attend and um, to be able to do those things to keep going and um, basically just keep the, keep the firefighters supported. Now, Bay Street here, that's, that's dedicated to a fallen firefighter, correct? Oh, well, to one of our members. To one of your he members. He was a Jersey City dispatcher, Joe Libero. He was killed on 9-11. Okay. And so um, we have the plaque up front and then the street was uh, Additionally named, it's still Bay Street, but it was additionally named Joseph Rivera Way. Very cool. And, and then great. there's one in the Heights, um, named after Carlos, the corner where he was killed was named after him, Carlos Negro. You have 48 years here. 48 years. That is an incredible amount of dedication uh, to our organization. What is it that keeps you coming here, bro? I haven't, I haven't figured a way to get out of the building yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really feel that that is the case. And uh, it's an incredible opportunity for us to, to hear your story and to uh, for our listeners, especially our younger listeners, to see that this goes on and on and on and on. There's, there's a great deal of tradition involved in what happens here in Jersey City. Um, what would you say your five-year plan is? 
Well, our five-year plan would be to replace the current uh, canteen apparatus with a new modern rig. Uh, this one has served us very well, but as I said, it's 19 years old, so it's getting near time to uh, think about a new new rig. Our other uh, major concern, obviously, is like any other volunteer organization, volunteerism is not what it used to be. We don't have uh, the same atmosphere in, in the country where people will volunteer and do things on their own. Uh, fire service is no uh, stranger to that either. Things have changed over the years. Uh, we don't have as many uh, young people coming into a firehouse and visiting as the years ago. Every neighborhood would have two or three kids that would always come to the firehouse, which right. is, you know, as I said, as one of the reasons, uh, one of the ways I got started in this. So, we, you know, we would hope to find the next generation of dedicated people that will support the fire service and help uh, keep the gong club uh, going Alive, another. Yeah. Now, do you go out and uh, proposition for membership? Like when you when you see uh, firefighters starting to retire, do you go do you go to those firefighters and say, hey, you know, join join the club? We'd love to have you. Is that how do you do your membership? How do you proposition? We try and uh, use social media now, trying to keep up with the times. And uh, we've had some inquiries via email or uh, Facebook, and we'll, we'll follow up with those. Uh, inquiries and try and get the uh, people interested. The Some of the other clubs around the country, I can think of uh, Philadelphia and Richmond, Virginia and Nashville in particular, uh, have quite a few retired uh, firefighters who want to keep their hand in the game, right. so to speak. Well, this is a great way to do it. Yes. So they've been very successful in doing that. It's something we'd like to uh, explore here as well. Right, because this, this could you could have quite a few members here. I mean, I, I know just walking around and being able to see some of the history they have here, and, and on top of that, the, the museum that you, you try to preserve here as well. Um, it's incredible. It's an incredible thing you're doing. That's incredible. So 62 years ago, they give you the keys to this building and say, it's all yours. 1958, uh, fire on Christmas Day. Wow. The chief of the department then uh, presented the keys to the club while they were operating a fire literally three blocks from here. No kidding. Yes. Door in the fire. Yes. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> Things are definitely done different back then, that's for sure. Oh, there's a bank building that was on fire, so he's feeling very generous. Yeah, I guess so. Well, listen, I uh, I can't thank you both enough for, for having us come visit this firehouse, uh, learning all about the Gong Club, because I, I honestly didn't know anything about this until Richie Gorman was nice enough to, uh, to mention it to us and told us. I mean, I, I can tell you, in speaking to, to Battalion Chief Gorman, this building, what you do, uh, means an awful lot to him. In in our conversation, he could not speak uh, enough. Yeah, he could not speak enough to the value of what you have going on here and, and the value you have to the city of Jersey City. So uh, again, I thank you. I know on behalf of our crew, uh, we certainly had a, a great time visiting and, and learning all about your club. Well, thank you for coming. And as the chief mentioned, uh, Chief Gorman is, is a great supporter of ours and. I venture to say that 99.9% uh, .9 of the firefighters, if you stop them asking, you'll get the same answer as they get from Chief Corman about the value of the Gong Club. Okay, he's, he's incredible. Well, folks, thank you so much for checking in at the Gong Club here in Jersey City. Many more to come. Be well.